Hello and welcome to Frank's School. Uh, I'm going to use uh, one of the last two days uh, of the second year for tonal harmony. Here comes my cat. Uh, and I'm giving myself a, a tall order for today. Uh, the humanities, uh, and you know, that's what Frank's School has been about, uh, the humanities. That's what I'm teaching. And by my definition, the humanities involves the, the study of human expression how humans express themselves, and that is very varied, as, as I've said before. Uh, well, uh, in the course of this, uh, I guess it's mostly in this second year, I've touched on tonal harmony, uh, music, uh, harmony in music, uh, and I decided that I would uh, say one last, or a few last things about it and try to gather it together. Um, in this video, that would have been last year, there may be a one point in front of this, uh, 156 day of the first year, I discussed equal temperament uh, in uh, in music, uh, which that maybe it was the first time that I touched on uh, uh, harmony. But then this year, these two videos here, I put them in parentheses because they don't exactly directly tackle tonal harmony. Uh, not really, I don't think. I believe this is the video where I began. began. I, I began to realize, I, I guess I'm going to teach a little bit of tonal harmony. Uh, so these uh, four, uh, those, uh, you, you should, if you, you're interested in trying to learn tonal harmony, before, uh, I mean, watch my video today, sure, if you wish, but it will make more sense if you go back and look at these first. And this one gets cut short. It, maybe I did that on purpose. <clears throat> it's sort of a mercy in a way because I was about on the piano. I was about to show how a diminished seventh resolves in four different directions, and I, I between talking and I, I get too confused to be able to do that easily on the piano. So I, don't, I guess I'm not going to show you that. What I want to—I'm uh, going to go upstairs to the piano here in the next two or three or four videos. I don't know how many it will take me to show you this. But I want to show you on the piano some of these things. First of all, a deceptive cadence. You're close enough. If you have followed this, you're close enough that I thought, well, I, why don't I show a deceptive cadence? It's not important. It's not that important, but it's kind of fun. A cadence is when uh, a song comes, to, the harmony of a song comes to a satisfying conclusion. And you usually get that from going from a five chord to a one to a one chord uh, on the piano or on a guitar, uh, a G, especially a G7, followed by a C major, a G major seven, or or just a G major, followed by a a C major, would give you a cadence. <clears throat> You've got to have at least two chords. Usually you have three. If you went F G uh, C then you would be going 4, 5, 1 in the key of C major. And, uh, and that would be a satisfying cadence. It, you can do that on a piano to establish a key. If, if you need to get, get yourself thinking in a particular key, if you go 4, 5, 1, boom, you're in that key. But sometimes you'll go from a 5 to a 6. That works too. But it's a surprise. And, and I think I can show you that. Uh, I'm going to try to show you that. It occurs in the Deutsches Lied. I think that's the right name for it in Germany. Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles. Uh, I, I, I'll, 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 maybe I'll, I'll tell you something about that song, uh, maybe right now. I might as well. Anyway, I, I, I'm going to harmonize it uh, in my way uh, <laughs> on the piano as best I can. And, and I'll show you uh, <clears throat> how when I harmonize it, I put a deceptive cadence in there. Uh, about this song, uh, Germany, Germany, over all. That was, uh, the, the Allies in World War II grabbed that, and they said, aha, see that, the Germans want to dominate the world. And uh, it, it, that, that was a mistranslation. Uh, Alles means everything. Uh, what that song was meant, the, the, the text, was that, that Germans should put their country over everything else. It was about German unification. But during World War II, uh, for propaganda, uh, that was used by the Allies. And it's a shame in a way because it, 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 uh, 
you know, that, that's the German national anthem. And, and I think, maybe I'm going out on a limb here, but I think Germany by far has the most beautiful national anthem. It was written by Joseph Haydn. Uh, and it was not written originally with that text. It was written about a, a czar or a, a uh, well, anyway, uh, and, and, and it's been used as a hymn. Uh, you know, I can't think of, offhand, I can't think of other, well, maybe Finlandia, uh, other uh, national anthems that, that ha are so beautiful that they've been incorporated as a hymn. Uh, uh, Glorious things of thee are spoken is the text for the hymn in English. Um, well, anyway, I, I like it. Uh, and uh, and uh, and so and and I'm going to play it as best I can uh, for uh, to show that deceptive cadence. Now another thing I want to go up and show is uh, what parallel fifths. When when you study harmony, parallel fifths is a no-no. If you take a fifth, let's say a C and a G, uh, C D E F G. That's five. C and G would be a fifth. If if you take a fifth. And you move them um, in, similarly. <laughs> you just move around a piano with fifths, like uh, row, row, row your boat, or something like that. Bum, bum, bum. If you do it in fifths, I'll maybe show it to you. That has an unpleasant sound to a Baroque music, anyway. It has a very different sound. And I'll show that to you uh, in the Lady and the Tramp. We are Siamese, if you please. That was harmonized with parallel fifths. And uh, another thing I could tell you now, it's just easier to do this teaching now rather than at the piano. Uh, I heard uh, one time when I was teaching, uh, there were a couple of either, I think they were seventh graders, a boy and a girl, that went to the same church. And uh, I had done uh, a song about Noah in class, and they wanted to sing to show the class that they could sing a song about Noah. And I thought, wow, I got them volunteering to come up and sing. And uh, they did, uh, uh, a cappella, of course, they just stood in front of the class. And when they went to start, they didn't get started on the same note. They got started uh, a fifth apart. Uh, and uh, they sang the whole song in parallel fifths, which didn't bother anybody. They were all satisfied. But I thought, wow, what was more amazing than that was the time. <laughs> um, this is a digression, but why not? There was a time, oh my gosh. I was at a Christmas concert and some flutes uh, were going to play <laughs> Oh Holy Night, uh, Oh Holy Night, da 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 uh, and they were going to play it a cappella on their flutes. Well, they'd never learned how to tune a flute. Uh, the, the band, uh, they just played, the, you know, the band director gave up on tuning, I guess, and so they played out of tune all the time. It was horrendous. But anyway, they decided that they would try. They should try to tune. And just before they went on stage, they went and tried, and they got it way off. They, and, they went, and they ended up playing uh, uh, Oh Holy Night in what's called par parallel minor seconds, or not, not parallel. They, they played it in minor seconds, which is two notes right against each other. <laughs> it sounded so bad. But of course everyone was satisfied and all, but I thought that that's amazing. I, I'll probably never hear that again. Well, and that was a digression. Uh, well, Parallel Fifths versus John Dowland's song Come Again, uh, composed in 1597, or, or published in. Uh, there's a harmonic progression in this song, which is so uh, beautiful. And it's parallel. Uh, you, you'll, you'll, I'll show it to you on the piano. It, it moves right up the piano, it, it parallel, but it's not fifths. It's the first inversion, which if you go back here, I explain about that. Oh, the, note, the note on the bottom is not the fundamental tone. So you've got parallel sixths, really. And uh, it is such a cool sound. Um, and uh, the reason I've got these names on here is because I'll do the best I can with this song. But if you'll go on YouTube, and I'll put the link in my description of this of course, this uh, video, William Ferguson does a beautiful job of it. And, and that was the best I'd found until about 10 minutes ago, <laughs> when I looked again to get that. And this man here, Luis Regidor Paín, he's done it more recently. And uh, that's what I really recommend uh, you hear.
and 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 I also recommend with this. <laughs> Cats. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, uh, uh, the comments. Read the comments about William Ferguson's. The comments for this man's are in Spanish. Uh, I think they're all in Spanish. As he must be sort of a Spanish hero to the to the the people that, that knew him, that he performed in Germany. Dusseldorf is where he performed that. But anyway, uh, if you look at some of those comments, this word come has a double meaning. It did back at that time, too. Uh, and when he sings about he wants to die with me, or die with me again in sweetest sympathy, he doesn't mean exactly die. That, that means that also has a, a almost certainly has, has a double meaning. So I, I'm leading you this. All right. Now, I've got two books that I want to show you. This is uh, this was my text at Harvard in uh, uh, Tonal Harmony. And I actually got an A in this course. It was a full year course all year. And I got an A, but I get the willies really when I look at this again. Uh, uh, those cats are able to scream again. There they go. Uh, there's Deceptive Cadence. Uh, Mozart, uh, they, they always gave an example uh, of how it was used, and that, that was uh, how you, Mozart used it in one spot. That was a, a hard course. Uh, but I wanted to show that to you, and I also wanted to show you this book. Uh, this is a Lutheran hymnal. I talked about it before. Uh, I, in my opinion, it's the best hymnal ever made that I know of, uh, and uh, it was redone. The, the, the uh, Lutheran Church made two others after it, and they just... If you could ever get a hold of one of these, I would hang on to it. Uh, I would hang on to it. I just don't think there's any better, for musicians anyway. Uh, and I'll be playing from that. Uh, okay, finally, let's see. Uh, four, part, four part singing. Uh, one of the reasons that hymnal is so satisfying to me and to my wife and a lot of other musicians is that you can sing in four, if you're used to singing in four parts, that's so satisfying in church to do. You, you not on, singing in four part harmony, four, it takes four people to do it, it is so satisfying because you don't need an organ or a piano. Four voices can make the complete harmony. And if you can do it, it's, you feel like such a unit. Sometimes we do it when my daughter's home, uh, and we've got somebody somebody that will take the other part. Uh, my daughter can sing tenor, I sing bass. Uh, my wife's a, an alto, and we usually have to have somebody to sing soprano, or we just let it be imagined that the soprano's there. Anyway, four-part four singing. Um, I'm going to have more to say about this, actually, later in the year, because of something I've decided to do. And and the hymnals, that especially that hymnal, is wonderful for four-part singing. I, I suspect sometimes that churches actually wanted to get people away from that because they felt that they were thinking too much about the fun of singing instead of the text. I don't know. But hymns are, are, can be done that way. And chorales, those are older than hymns. They're very similar. They're very difficult. Bach wrote, uh, composed, uh, harmonized many, many chorales. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, this is stuff that I'll be talking about up there, I think, on the piano. Chord change, you change the chord on the beat, either the first or third beat, usually, uh, uh, if your song is in 2-4 uh, four or 4-4, four, four, or four, four, most hymns are, you change it on the beat. I know in Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber Alice, there's one place where I can't, I'm not satisfied with my harmonization because there's a beat that I'd like to be changing the chord on, and I haven't figured out exactly what that will be. Maybe I'll tell you about that. First and third beat out of four. Um, uh, I mean, you you can you don't always do that, but uh, all right. Uh, I guess that's everything. As I said, this is a tall order I've put before myself. But when I get to the piano, it's hard for me because I. I, I want to talk and I can't get the camera right and and it's you know it's sort of like two dimensions to to let my fingers do what they want to do and try to explain what I'm doing but I'm going to do the best I can well this has been a little bit long but I uh, only have one more day left in the second year after today see you soon up at the uh, piano uh, I hope